guys. Welcome to Punky's World. I want to show you what I brought home. Well, two things I brought home have to go in the fridge. I'm kind of stumped to the bottom here. They gave me some Sprite to bring home. Ugh. I guess let me pull this out. There we go. They had me bring a bunch of the um, Lay's home. So, because of course there's a Hawaiian theme. He's going to go in my fridge in my room. So I'll put him there. Um, so, I did. <laughs> Let me get him untangled from the grass skirt that I was given. Okay, that's the skirt. Untangle boys. There we go. Um, I also have, which are going in my trinket box, the headband, which goes like this. And I have the bracelet somewhere. A little wristlet. <laughs> Hopefully this is enough for all the ladies. The historical society. There were so many. And not a lot of people showed up, so she wanted to make sure that you know, they got use. So I'll leave mine here. <laughs> Probably where the bracelet is, so this what where is that? There it is. I'm going to go back in here because they're going to the Historical Society to get to all the ladies. Gonna get them laid. <laughs> so, we'll put that there. Here's the wristlet. Um, so, that, that, oh. And my purple leg, it all goes in my pretty box. That's my purple leg. And it all goes there. It Matched my dress perfectly. Um, go in my trinket box. So they're going to sit here. And my friend's sister gave me her hula skirt. That's cool. I'm going to try to find a place to hang that. It won't fit in my dress box. I'm going to try to find a place to hang that. That's really neat. Pretty nice. So, this is the, um, the pilot. Daily Journal, <laughs> Sunday, June 25th, June 25, 
she asked me, fine. And um, so I um, agreed to do it. She introduced him as Tom, the gay gynecologist. <laughs> And pretty soon, you know, the cat was out of the bag that I knew who he really was. I'm like, I recognized you. I knew you were one of our classmates. I just couldn't place it. He just, he was so uncomfortable around me because he thought he really hurt my feelings when we were kids. He was really mean. He was my neighbor. Right down the street. We grew up down the street from each other. Him and his brother used to ride their bikes around the neighborhood, you know, around Main Street. I think I've shown you where he lived in videos. He literally lived right next to Ekstrom, kind of in the back. I mean, he was right there. So I felt horrible, and I told him. I said, first of all, it goes against my relig religious beliefs to hate anyone. Do not hate you. And as far as I can remember, I have no reason to hate you. And I was telling Holly, if you had said it was this boy, I might have been uncomfortable, and this is why. But I don't hate anyone. And I don't. Um, I just, I don't. I still have a pulled muscle right here in my back. Uh, right down here. Right down here. Right here. At a pool, we could have gone swimming, but everybody told me that. I would have brought a bathing suit in a heartbeat. Anyway, um, I got to see my friend's trailer at the um, campground. She's way up in the back, like in the woods. A great spot. Um, her and her husband. Her husband, Andy, is wonderful. Um, thank you, Holly and Andy, for putting this together. I'm so sorry that so many people canceled out on you. It was That was terrible. Terrible, terrible, and terrible. Um, you know, when you had all of this planned and spent all of this money and all of this time to do this, it's just, mm, and in the last two days before, and most of the people canceled because she wasn't having a catered sit-down dinner. Excuse me? You're lucky the reunion wasn't in the school gym. <sighs> <coughs> Folks. I brought money to pay for a meal. Because I thought it was going to be similar to some of our other meetings. Where we would each pitch in and pay for a meal. I had no idea people were making food. Matter of fact, the boy that didn't want me to know who he was actually has a trailer there too. Um, and he's become best friends with her husband. <laughs> so, that's pretty cool. I actually had a really good time. So, overall, <coughs> great music. Husband Andy had it going from his phone to these two big Bluetooth speakers that change colors <coughs> that were up on a couple of tables on a bit of a stage inside the pavilion. We danced a little bit, but not a lot. And my Friend's sister's grandson wanted me to pick him up 
So I did, but I had to switch him over to my left hip because my right hip wasn't having it. <laughs> By that point, my hip was tapped out. <laughs> I got to play air hockey because um, they have a little game room where they have ping pong, pool, air hockey. They have books, a television. I think they have DVDs to go with the television. Um, so just a little room, you know. And uh, I went over, and the first time I went over, the Utah hockey table wasn't even on. But one of the little girls, nine years old, absolutely brilliant, got it to work. <coughs> so when I went back, it was on, and I said, somebody want to play? And Mom asked, said, that's one of the kids. So I did, and I got right up and played with me. Her name was Madison. Um, and I told her, I shook her little hand, and I, I, at the end, and I told her mother and her, I said, you don't know what this means to me. Because I used to play this with my father at the amusement park as a kid. You know? This is one of our favorite things to do together. In fact, we liked it so much that one year for Christmas, my mother surprised us and got us both a tabletop one. Got a, you know, a joint gift. My father was like a little kid when I opened that. He could not wait to get it out of the box and get it set up. Um, but he would have said, if he had beaten me, like, like she beat me by like two points, he would have said, I blew your doors in. <laughs> it just, it, it, I could hear him saying, she blew your doors in. You know, and I, I just, I couldn't get the smile off of my face. the whole time, and even right afterwards. For me, it was emotional, it was happy, it was... This was my dad, you know? Um, but yeah, Mom got that as a joint gift for Dad and I. Neither one of us knew about it, so he was like a little kid, you know? She had us both open it. When we saw it, we're like, yay! You know? It was transported back to being a kid, you know? Because we played on the big one, you know? At, at, I believe it was at Whalen Park we played. No, and we played at the... Um, we did play there, but we also used to play at the um, arcade at the Lincoln Mall in Rhode Island. They had one, and we used to play there. You know, Mom would play the winner, but overall, that it was our thing. It was just something we did. And um, so. <clears throat> so, yeah, it was fun. Oh, they have a foosball table, too. Um, which is neat. The ball is a little bit short, though. It's hard to hit. The ball should be slightly bigger than it is. It's a little miniature soccer ball, but it should be just slightly bigger than it is because a lot of times the the feet or foot goes over the top of the ball, even when it's right in front of it. So, um... That brought back memories of youth group, because we had one of those in the basement at youth group. So, so yeah, overall, wonderful. Thank you, Holly Noel Smith. Oh. One of my highlights, um, a nonverbal autistic boy, five years old, is actually pulling on my hand, trying to get me to get in the pool because he threw his, his little man in the pool. And he was getting all upset and kind of groaning and grunting because he, could, he couldn't talk. He was trying to communicate. And I was like, wow. 
as he's pulling me, I'm looking at Holly. He says, he wants you to get in the pool. I said, oh, not in my dress. <laughs> so his mother jumped in, fully clothed. But they have a they have a, a trailer there, so she can go get dressed. No big deal. And uh, he threw it in again, and then he threw something else in. And she gladly got it for him. Didn't get upset at all. <laughs> I talked to the dad. Very nice man. Um, the The whole atmosphere at the campground was one of family, you know, because I told him about my situation, about my diagnosis and stuff, and about how Tri-Valley helped me, and he said, Lisa is from Adult Protective Services at Tri-Valley. Talk to Lisa. So I finally got a hold of Lisa, and we talked, and she knows Jim, and she knows Caitlin, and uh, amazing. Um, and she told me the company they use to ride is fully vetted. Um, the drivers are all quarried and thoroughly checked as far as driving record and all of that. So hmm, that makes me feel better um, about going all the way to Worcester with them. So. I'm happy. <laughs> it was an amazing day. But power is at 30%, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm staying in. It's too hot. God bless you. Bye, guys.